Oh, hi. Hey, where's the woman? Marlon Brando revolutionized Hollywood with his bold acting style and irresistible charm. Yet what astonishes many is his lesser-known side as a bicep heartthrob who had passionate affairs with numerous stars of his time. Despite his fame and success, including two Academy Awards, Brando's personal life was like a movie with three marriages, numerous lovers, and a whopping 15 children. His romantic escapades were as legendary as his iconic roles. Join us as we delve into Brando's surprising sessions and reveal which Hollywood superstars he took to bed. Marlon Brando, The Hollywood's Legend Brando had an amazing career that lasted for 60 years, during which time he won the Academy Award for Best Actor two times. People think he's probably the best and most important actor of the 1900s. Besides acting, he also advocated for important causes like civil rights and Native American rights. His role as Vito Corleone in The Godfather was a game changer. It brought him back to the top after a slump in his career and got him his second Oscar. At the 1973 Oscars, he boldly refused the award to support the American Indian movement. Instead, Sakin Littlefeather spoke for him, dressed in traditional Apache clothing, saying that Brando wouldn't accept the award because of how poorly Native Americans were treated in Hollywood. Later on, Brando became known more for his personal life than his acting. He struggled with his weight, gaining a lot in the 70s and dealing with health issues like diabetes in the 90s. Sadly, he passed away on July 1st, 2004, because of breathing problems and heart failure. Oh, hi. Hey, where's the woman? The legend's early life. Born on April 3, 1924 in Omaha, Nebraska, Marlon Brando Jr. was the only son of Marlon Brando Sr. and Dorothy Pennebaker, and the last sibling to two older sisters named Jocelyn and Francis. His dad worked as a salesman and was often away from home, while his mom was a stage actress who wasn't around much either. Because his mom was gone a lot, Brando grew up closer to the housekeeper than his, and when she left to get married, he felt abandoned, which greatly shattered him. Brando's family background was a mix of German, Dutch, English, and Irish. Some of his ancestors came from Germany and France many years ago, while others were Irish immigrants who fought in the American Civil War. When Brando was six years old, his family moved to Evanston, Illinois. He liked to imitate others and play tricks there, and he made a lifelong friend named Wally Cox. Later, after his parents split up, he moved with his mom and siblings to California. But his parents reunited a couple of years later, and Brando's dad bought a farmhouse in Illinois. This relocation saw Brando enroll in Libertyville High School, where he was great at sports and acting, but struggled with his other classes, and even got held back a year before eventually getting kicked out in 1941 because of his behavior. Sadly, during this period, his relationship with his dad was far from loving. Brando couldn't shake off the pain from his dad's violent outbursts, fueled by alcohol and anger. Dorothy tried to shield her son from these outbursts, but it didn't help. Brando's dad lacked warmth, pushing Dorothy to turn to alcohol and pills in an attempt to end her life. The unbearable atmosphere turned Brando into a rebellious troublemaker. He was reported to be seen carrying a knife and slashing tires, and there was even an incident where he shot his BB gun from his window, with its bullet accidentally injuring a man. Dorothy's addiction only grew worse, and one night Brando's dad brought her home drunk, dragged her upstairs, and started beating her. Brando heard and rushed upstairs to protect her, swearing to kill his dad if he laid a hand on her again. His father then sent Brando to Shattuck Military Academy, where he had himself studied. Brando was introduced to drama classes at the Military Academy, encouraged by the English department head, Duke Wagner. Brando excelled at acting until 1943, when he was put on probation for insubordination to an officer during maneuvers. Wagner was later expelled from the Academy for having relationships with cadets, while Braden was confined to the campus but sneaked into town and was caught. The faculty voted to expel him although he was supported by the students who thought expulsion was too harsh. Brando was invited back for the following year, but decided instead to drop out of high school. He then worked as a ditch digger as a summer job arranged by his father and tried to enlist in the army. But his routine physical revealed that a football injury he had sustained at Shattuck had left him with a trick knee. He was classified as physically unfit for military service. Brando followed his sisters to New York, studying at the American Theater Wing Professional School, part of the dramatic workshop of the new school, with influential German director Erwin Piscotter. In a 1988 documentary, Marlon Brando, The Wild One, 
Brando's sister Jocelyn recalled that he was in a school play and enjoyed it, so he decided to go to New York and study acting because that was the only thing he enjoyed when he was 18. In the A&E biography episode on Brando, George England said Brando fell into acting in New York because he was accepted there. He wasn't criticized, and it was the first time in his life that he heard good things about himself. Brando spent his first few months sleeping on friends' couches in New York. He lived with Roy Somlio for a time, who later became a four-time Emmy-winning Broadway producer. Brando was a big fan and supporter of Stella Adler, from whom he learned the techniques of the Stanislavski system. This method encouraged actors to explore their inner feelings and external actions to become the characters they were playing. Brando's amazing understanding and commitment to realism were clear from the start. Adler used to tell a story about teaching Brando. She asked the class to act like chickens, saying a nuclear bomb was about to drop. Most of the class panicked and ran around, but Brando stayed calm and pretended to lay an egg. When Adler asked why, he said, I'm a chicken. What do I know about bombs? Although many people thought of Brando as a method actor, he disagreed. He didn't like Lee Strasberg's teachings. In an interview, he mentioned that after he had some success, Lee Strasberg tried to take credit for teaching him how to act. Brando claims that Lee never taught him anything. In fact, Brando believed that Lee would have claimed credit for the sun and the moon if he believed he could get away with it. Brando described Lee as an ambitious, selfish man who exploited the people who attended the actor's studio and tried to project himself as an acting oracle and guru. Because the preconceptions is in terms of the result. Some people worshipped him, but Brando never knew why, adding that he sometimes went to the actor's studio on Saturday mornings because Elia Kazan was teaching, and there were usually a lot of good-looking girls. Brando was the first to bring a natural approach to acting in movies. Dustin Hoffman said Brando would often chat with cameramen and fellow actors about their weekends, even after the director said, action. He'd only start the dialogue when he felt it was as natural as their conversation. In his 2015 documentary, Listen to Me, Marlin, he said that before him, actors were like breakfast cereals. Predictable. Critics later called him difficult, but actors who worked with him said it was just his technique. While Brando had already made a name for himself in Hollywood, he had to go through years of psychotherapy. This treatment helped put out dark and paralyzing memories of his childhood, and he was diagnosed as a psychoneurotic with chronic anxiety that stopped short of delusions or hallucinations, which created panic attacks, paranoia, and depression that left Brando in misery and overwhelmed by the fear that his fame was destroying him. He wanted to be a normal person. Eventually, he fled from the intrusive press and hid away from the public eye. He only made movies because of a promise he made to his dying mother. It was originally her dream to be an actor. Brando's Sexual Conquests Brando was famous for his eventful personal life and many partners and children. He was a dad to at least 11 kids, three of whom he adopted. He needed different girlfriends for different days of the week, sleeping with the wives of his friends, since he found married women to be a more exciting pursuit. When Brando was still in Adler's class, he was devoted to acting and ready to learn. But another thing that kept him going was the sex. During the 1947 play A Streetcar Named Desire, Brando got infatuated with another actor, Sandy Campbell, who played a small role. Brando even asked Campbell to have a relationship with him, and they were often seen together holding hands backstage. Truman Capote mentioned that both Campbell and Brando admitted to being in a relationship. Capote said that he asked Marlon, and he admitted it. He said Marlon also told him that he had slept with lots of other guys too, but he didn't see himself as gay. In his book, Songs My Mother Taught Me, Brando wrote about meeting Marilyn Monroe at a party where she played the piano, unnoticed by anyone else. He said they had a fling and kept in touch on and off for years. He also claimed to have had many other romances, but he didn't talk about his marriages, wives, or kids in his autobiography. In the early 1950s, he met Reiko Sato, a Japanese-American actress and dancer. Although their romance cooled down, they stayed friends until Sato passed away. Later on, she split her time between Los Angeles and Tetiarawa. In 1954, it was reported that they were dating. Brando also had a relationship with actress Ariane Pat Quinn. Brando, who was never satisfied with one partner, was captivated by Mexican actress Katie Gerardo after watching her in High Noon. They met while he was filming Viva Zapata in Mexico. The despotism of Porfirio Diaz is unbearable. 
For more than 34 years, he's ruled with the hand of a ruthless tyrant. Brando told Joseph L. Mankiewicz that he was drawn to her mysterious eyes that were as dark as night, piercing like fiery arrows. Their first date led to a long-lasting affair, reaching its peak during the filming of One-Eyed Jacks in 1961. I know all his old stamping grounds. A movie directed by Brando. Brando began a love affair with actress Rita Moreno. Moreno later shared in her memoir that when she became pregnant with Brando, he arranged for her to have an abortion. After the procedure went wrong and Brando fell for Tarita Terripaya, Moreno tried to end her life by overdosing on Brando's sleeping pills. Years later, Moreno played Brando's love interest in a movie called The Night of the Following Day. Brando was also reported to have been briefly engaged to 19-year-old French actress Josanne Mariani in 1954. However, they called off the engagement when Brando discovered another girlfriend, Anna Kashfi, was pregnant. He married Kashfi in 1957. Brando and Kashfi had a son, Christian Brando, on May 11, 1958, before divorcing in 1959. In 1960, Brando married Movita Castaneda, a Mexican-American actress. However, their marriage ended in 1968, when they discovered Castaneda's previous marriage was still valid. They had two kids together, Miko Castaneda Brando, born in 1961, and Rebecca Brando, born in 1966. His third wife was French actress Tarita Terripaya, who played his love interest in Mutiny on the Bounty. They got married on August 10, 1962. She was 20, much younger than Brando, who loved her innocence. Because Terripaya spoke French, Brando became fluent in the language and did many interviews in French. They had two kids together, Simon Tehotu Brando, born in 1963, and Tarita Cheyenne Brando, born in 1970. Brando also adopted Terry Paya's daughter, Maimiti Brando, born in 1977, and her niece, Rayatua Brando, born in 1982. But their marriage ended in July 1972. The daughter of actress Cynthia Lynn claimed that Brando had a short fling with her mom, who acted alongside Brando in Bedtime Story. She said she was born in 1964 because of this affair. From the late 1960s to the early 1980s, Brando had a tumultuous, long-term relationship with actress Jill Banner. Brando had a long-term relationship with his housekeeper, Maria Cristina Ruiz. They had three children together, Nina Priscilla Brando, born on May 13, 1989. Miles Jonathan Brando, born on January 16, 1992, and Timothy Gahan Brando, born on January 6, 1994. Brando also adopted Petra Brando Corval, born in 1972, the daughter of his assistant Caroline Barrett and novelist James Clavel. Brando once told a French reporter that homosexuality was so common then that it was not a big deal. Like many guys, he confessed to having had experiences with men, and he was not embarrassed. Rumors would later circulate about Brando's close friendship with Wally Cox. Brando once told a reporter that if Wally had been a woman, he would have married him, and they would have lived happily ever after. But two of Cox's wives dismissed the idea that their bond was anything more than platonic. In 2018, Quincy Jones and Jennifer Lee claimed that Brando had a sexual relationship with comedian and Superman the Third actor Richard Pryor. However, Pryor's daughter, Rain Pryor, later disagreed with this claim. Brando's Unpredictable Lifestyle Brando gained a reputation as a wild child due to his public outbursts and crazy antics. He was like rock and roll before anyone knew what rock and roll was. While filming Mutiny on the Bounty in 1962, his behavior only added to his reputation as a troublesome star. He was accused of causing a change in director and blowing the budget, but he denied being at fault for either. On June 12, 1973, Brando broke the jaw of paparazzo Ron Galella. Galella had been following Brando, who was with talk show host Dick Cavett, after a taping of The Dick Cavett Show in New York City. Brando settled out of court for $40,000 and ended up with an infected hand. Galella wore a football helmet the next time he photographed Brando at a gala in 1974. The filming of Mutiny on the Bounty greatly impacted Brando's life because he fell in love with Tahiti and its people. He bought a group of 12 islands called Tetiaroa, and in 1970, he hired a young, award-winning architect from Los Angeles named Bernard Judge to build his home and a natural village without harming the environment. They even set up an environmental lab to protect seabirds and turtles, and many student groups visited over the years. Unfortunately, a hurricane in 1983 destroyed a lot of the buildings, including his resort. However, a hotel called the Brando Resort opened in 2014. 
Brando was also into ham radio, using the call signs KE6PZH and FO5GJ from his island. He was listed in the Federal Communications Commission records as Martin Brando to keep his privacy. In an episode of A&E Biography about Brando, biographer Peter Manso said that being a celebrity, let Marlon get back at the world that had hurt him so deeply. On the other hand, he hated it because he knew it was fake and wouldn't last. Another biographer, David Thompson, said that many people who worked with him, hoping for the best, ended up leaving in despair, saying that he was like a spoiled kid. Everything had to be done his way, or he'll leave with some big story about how he was mistreated and insulted. Political Involvements Brando was actively involved in politics and greatly impacted the political scene. In 1946, Brando acted in Ben Hecht's play, A Flag is Born. He went to some events to raise money for John F. Kennedy during the 1960 presidential election. In August 1963, he joined the March on Washington and other famous people like Harry Belafonte, James Garner, Charlton Heston, Burt Lancaster, and Sidney Poitier. Brando also took part in the Freedom Rides with Paul Newman. He supported Lyndon B. Johnson in the 1964 United States presidential election. In the fall of 1967, Brando went to Helsinki, Finland for a charity event organized by UNICEF at the Helsinki City Theater. The event was shown on TV in 13 countries. Brando's visit was inspired by the hunger he saw in Bihar, India. He showed a film he made there to the press and invited guests. He spoke up for children's rights and helped countries that needed it. After Martin Luther King Jr. was killed in 1968, Brando made a big commitment to continuing King's work. Right after King died, he said he wouldn't be in the main role of a big movie called The Arrangement because he wanted to focus on the civil rights movement. In an episode of A&E's biography about Brando, Actor Martin Sheen said that he'll never forget the night when Reverend King was shot. He turned on the news and saw Marlon walking through Harlem with Mayor Lindsay. There were shooters and lots of trouble, but he kept going and talking in those neighborhoods with Mayor Lindsay. It was one of the bravest things he had ever seen, and it meant a lot and did a lot. Brando was involved in the civil rights movement even before King's death. In the early 1960s, he gave a lot of money to the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and to a fund for the kids of Medgar Evers, a leader of the NAACP in Mississippi who was killed. In 1964, Brando got arrested at a fish-in protest to support Native Americans who were promised fishing rights in Puget Sound but didn't get them. Around this time, Brando acted in movies about human rights. Sayonara was about interracial love, and The Ugly American showed how U.S. officials acted in other countries and how it affected the people there. He also gave money to the Black Panther Party and was friends with its founder, Bobby Seale. He even gave a speech after the police shot Bobby Hutton. But Brando stopped supporting the group when he thought they were becoming too radical, especially after reading a Panther pamphlet by Eldridge Cleaver that talked about using violence for the revolution. Brando also supported Native American rights and the American Indian movement. When he got arrested at the Fish-In protest in March 1964 near Tacoma, Washington, he earned respect from the Puyallup tribe, who called the place where he was arrested Brando's Landing. At the 1973 Academy Awards, Brando didn't take the Oscar he won for The Godfather. Instead, Sachin Littlefeather went up in full Apache clothing and said Brando wouldn't take the award because of how Native Americans were treated in the movie industry. This happened while there was a standoff at Wounded Knee, and it got a lot of attention from the media in the U.S. and worldwide. Many people who supported the movement saw it as a big win. Beyond his acting, Brando attended the California Assembly to support a fair housing law and even joined picket lines in 1963 to protest housing discrimination. He was also against apartheid. In 1964, he supported boycotting his movies in South Africa so they wouldn't be shown to segregated audiences. He also joined a protest in 1975 against American investments in South Africa and for Nelson Mandela's release. In 1989, he starred in the movie A Dry White Season, based on Andre Brink's book. Brando talked about Jews and Hollywood in a Playboy interview in January 1979. He said that every race has been shown in a bad light in movies, except Jews, because they made sure of it. In a similar talk on Larry King Live in April 1996, he said Hollywood was run by Jews and owned by Jews, and they should care more about people suffering. Larry King, who was Jewish, challenged him, but Brando said he appreciated what Jews had done for the world. Jay Cantor, Brando's agent and friend, stood up for him in Daily Variety, saying Brando talked to him about how much he liked Jewish people and was a big supporter of Israel. Cantor himself was Jewish. 
In his article for Jewish Journal, Louis Kemp also wrote about Brando being a friend to Jewish people when they needed it most. Marlon Brando's Legacy Brando was like a shining star in the movie world after the war. The American Film Institute thinks he's super cool, ranking him the fourth greatest guy to hit the screen before or during 1950. He wowed critics with his awesome acting and his magnetic charm. Brando was a big fan of method acting and made it famous. People say he's one of the absolute best actors of the last century. Time magazine even named him one of the most important people of the whole 1900s, calling him the actor of the century. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, Brando was the king of method acting, and he stood out because he didn't talk all proper like in his movies. Despite sometimes making weird choices and not always being super inspired, he still managed to capture audiences with his intense emotions and quirky habits. Marlon Brando was like a superstar who everyone loved. He became famous in the 1950s and changed American culture in a big way. Film critic Pauline Kael said Brando was different from other actors at the time because he didn't follow any rules. He was tough and didn't care about what society thought. People loved him because he stood up for himself and didn't take any nonsense. Brando was seen as a modern American hero who did things his way and didn't let anyone tell him what to do. Sociologist Suzanne McDonald Walker described Brando as a cultural symbol, wearing his leather jacket and jeans with a cool, rebellious look. Johnny Straubel, ER's character in The Wild One B, became famous for his tough attitude and style, inspiring people to copy his look with motorcycle jackets, jeans, and sunglasses. Famous stars like James Dean and Elvis Presley copied Brando's acting and style. Brando's famous line, I could have been a contender from on the waterfront is still remembered today as one of the greatest movie moments ever. In 2008, replicas of Brando's leather jacket in The Wild One were released, showing how his cool image still captures people's imaginations. Brando was not just a great actor, he was also seen as a really attractive guy. Linda Williams said he was the ultimate American heartthrob in the late 1900s and early 1960s. People admired him for his cool style and tough image, which influenced how others saw themselves, especially in the 1950s. His fame didn't stop at movies. Brando also became part of popular songs. Bruce Springsteen sang about him, saying he could walk right into the sun like Brando. Neil Young also mentioned sitting with Pocahontas and him by a fire. Many other artists, like Madonna and Leonard Cohen, included Brando in their songs. Even Bob Dylan referred to him in a song, mixing him with Al Pacino from Scarface and calling it a robot commando. You can even spot Brando on the cover of the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band album, surrounded by other famous people. His movies and James Dean's made Honda create ads to show that not all people who ride motorcycles are bad thanks to their rebellious image in the films. In his book, Songs My Mother Taught Me, Brando talked about how acting helped him express emotions he couldn't show in real life. He said that intense feelings hidden inside could burst out during acting, which might be helpful. Looking back, he thought his tough childhood and feeling unloved might have made him a better actor giving him a special kind of intensity. He admitted that while he admired theater, it drained him emotionally. Acting in a streetcar named Desire every night was like a roller coaster of emotions. Yelling, crying, and smashing things on stage. It wore him out. Brando praised Stella Adler and her acting method for making movies more realistic. However, he also felt that American actors struggled with classical plays like Shakespeare because they had a different appreciation for the language. He believed English theater did a better job with those kinds of plays. In a documentary, Brando talked about how tough it was to play a death scene convincingly. He said you had to make the audience truly believe you were dying by tapping into your most personal memories. He had a list of favorite actors, including Spencer Tracy and James Cagney, and he admired modern actors like Sean Penn and Johnny Depp. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.